NASA has declared that now is the prime opportunity to focus on Venus, following new revelations about the potential for life on the planet. If you were to peruse NASA's archives from the 1960s, you'd find references to Venus as a planet of condemnation, while Mars became our primary target for exploration. Such caution in labeling celestial bodies was common during the intense space race. At that time, the Soviet Union was heavily invested in sending missions to Venus, despite the planet's seemingly inhospitable conditions. The Soviet Venera program continued to operate until the fall of the Soviet Empire. Thanks to Neil deGrasse Tyson, we now have insight into these missions as we delve into declassified photographs of Venus captured by the Soviet Union. The collapse of the Soviet Union was significant in many respects, not only shifting global political dynamics but also burying numerous secrets with it. The Soviets were known for their tendency to keep information classified, from their intelligence operations to their efforts in extraterrestrial research, suggesting they may hold many undisclosed mysteries. Before the United States dominated planetary exploration, the Soviet Union was the leader in space endeavors. They devoted significant attention to Venus, referred to as Venera in Russian, launching a series of missions from 1961 to 1983. While the U.S. focused on lunar missions during this period, the Soviets redirected their resources towards Venus. Their obsession with this second planet from the sun raises questions. Did they envision it as a potential military base, or were they seeking to colonize it after investigating the possibility of life? Determining the exact motivations behind Soviet exploration of Venus is challenging, especially since these missions were carried out during the Cold War, when transparency about goals was scarce. Much of what we know about their Venusian missions comes from declassified information, and even then, the details are often elusive. The Soviet Union launched 28 missions to Venus, with 13 spacecraft successfully entering its atmosphere, and eight of those achieving a landing. These complex missions placed the Soviets at the forefront of space exploration, while the U.S. lagged behind, focusing more on satellite technology than on planetary exploration. Historically, the Soviet space program was the first to send a probe into the atmosphere of a planet beyond Earth and achieved the first soft landing on another planet, capturing images and sounds from its surface well before the U.S. did. Despite these remarkable achievements, the Soviet space program remains under-recognized, largely due to its tendency to maintain secrecy. After the dissolution of the USSR in 1992, the program was disbanded, and much of its historical data was lost or destroyed when it was revived as Roscosmos. This is why we lack a definitive understanding of the motivations behind the Soviet missions to Venus. If we were to make an educated guess, the Soviet interest in Venus may have been driven by cost efficiency. It's not that they lacked confidence in the planet's potential for habitability. Rather, they were investigating the presence of water, solar radiation levels, and the planet's overall characteristics. Without a series of missions, it would have been nearly impossible to gauge Venus's extreme temperatures and dense atmosphere. Today, many scientists are skeptical about the possibility of life on Venus, given its scorching temperatures capable of melting lead and its thick atmosphere, which exerts pressure over three times that of Earth. However, these views reflect contemporary understanding and should not overshadow the Soviet Union's significant contributions to Venus exploration. For them, studying Venus was a worthy endeavor, even if only to assert their presence in the space race. Exploring more habitable planets like Mars was not off the table but was more expensive than sending missions to Venus. Ultimately, it all boils down to the, the temperatures from Earth to other celestial and surface bodies. pressures were documented at that time while the Soviets aimed to record sounds from Venus. The next significant achievement for their program came in the mid-1980s with Venera 13, which surpassed all previous interplanetary missions in complexity. This spacecraft was the first to capture panoramic images of Venus's surface. Simultaneously, the Soviet program launched Venera 14 to gather similar data about the planet's terrain. As one of the earliest nations to discover and recognize Venus, the Soviet Union has renewed its ambitions for Venus missions. Venerid is a planned joint mission between Roscosmos and NASA, aimed at exploring the atmosphere and surface of Venus. The name Venerid derives from the Russian word for Venus and is expected to signify a sustained mission launching in the late 2020s or early 2030s. 
This mission aims to study the planet's atmospheric and geological history and search for signs of any past or present habitability. It will include an orbiter, a lander, and possibly an inflatable device for detailed climate research. The legacy of the Venera missions extends beyond their technological achievements and global implications. Initiated by the Soviet Union during the height of the Cold War, these missions represented a pinnacle of human ingenuity and determination in space exploration, despite the numerous challenges they faced. The Soviets persisted in their quest to unlock the secrets of Venus, a planet long considered hostile to life. A key aspect of the Venera missions was their pioneering use of robotic probes to study planetary atmospheres and surfaces. These missions paved the way for future exploration beyond Earth's neighborhood and established the foundation for our understanding of planetary science. The data collected by the Venera spacecraft provided valuable insights into Venus's extreme environment, including its scorching temperatures, crushing atmospheric pressure, and toxic atmosphere dominated by carbon dioxide. Furthermore, the technological advancements achieved through the Venera program had broader implications for space exploration as a whole. The development of heat-resistant materials, robust communication systems, and reliable landing techniques were significant milestones that benefited subsequent missions to other planets, such as Mars and beyond. The lessons learned from the Venera missions continue to inform spacecraft design and operational systems in modern space exploration efforts. Beyond their scientific and technological significance, the Venera missions also held considerable social and political implications during the space race era. These missions symbolized the competition between superpowers for dominance in space exploration. For the Soviet Union, success in the Venera program was not just about scientific discovery. It was also a demonstration of technological prowess and ideological superiority over the United States. The international community closely monitored each Venera mission, recognizing their importance in expanding humanity's understanding of the solar system. The successful soft landing of Venera 7 on Venus in 1970 marked a crucial milestone as it became the first spacecraft to transmit data from another planet's surface. This accomplishment highlighted the Soviet Union's ability to overcome the formidable challenges posed by Venus's harsh conditions. In addition to scientific instruments, the Venera spacecraft carried cameras that captured the first close-up images of Venus's surface, revealing a rugged landscape characterized by rocky plains and volcanic features, thereby providing valuable geological insights into the planet's history and evolution. The panoramic images taken by later missions, such as Venera 13 and 14, further enhanced our understanding of Venus's surface morphology and composition. Despite their successes, the Venera missions also faced their share of setbacks and challenges. Several missions either failed to reach Venus or encountered technical malfunctions that prevented them from transmitting data back to Earth. The difficulties of operating in Venus's hostile environment, characterized by extreme temperatures exceeding 450 degrees Celsius 842 degrees Fahrenheit and corrosive sulfuric acid clouds, posed significant engineering challenges for spacecraft design and operation. Nevertheless, the persistence and dedication of the Soviet scientists and engineers involved in the Venera program laid the groundwork for future missions to Venus and other celestial bodies. The legacy of the Venera missions endures in the ongoing exploration of Venus by space agencies worldwide, including NASA's upcoming VT mission in collaboration with Roscosmos. Looking ahead, the VT mission aims to build upon the successes of its predecessors by deploying advanced instruments to study Venus's atmosphere surface geology, and potential signs of past or present habitability. This mission represents a collaborative effort to unravel the remaining mysteries of Earth's closest planetary neighbor, and to expand our understanding of the conditions the planet that could support is only life 40 beyond million our own kilometers planet. away from us, while Mars is typically about 250 million kilometers distant. Such vast differences in distance lead to significant variations in cost. Additionally, if the United States weren't the world's largest economy, it would have been much harder to explore Mars. Various reports suggest that Soviet missions were often unstable and faced serious technical shortcomings. Their spacecraft struggled to cover astronomical distances, and the organization had a poor history of losing contact with its rockets. This explains why the Soviet space program favored shorter, closer missions that were more likely to yield results.
However, without considering the context of the space race, the story of the Venera missions would be incomplete. At the time of the Soviet Union's launch of Sputnik 1, the first artificial satellite, in 1957, the U.S. wasn't even on the space map. This event intensified the competition and solidified its importance. What's particularly intriguing is why the U.S. focused on the Moon instead of Venus. NASA experienced a series of failures with its Venus missions during the 1960s, leading to a phenomenon dubbed the Venus Curse. Each time they launched a probe into Venus's harsh atmosphere, it encountered issues. During this period, the Soviet Union recognized an opportunity to capitalize on NASA's setbacks. Both the U.S. and the USSR were determined to win the space race, and the most logical course of action was to pursue different objectives. The Soviet space program set its sights on Earth's sister planet, achieving something that NASA had failed to accomplish. Despite facing limited resources and bureaucratic challenges, the Soviets continually launched missions to Venus to solidify their lead against the U.S., which was focused on lunar exploration. This rivalry was not without animosity, and the U.S. agency was motivated to publicly criticize the USSR's focus on Venus. The planet was labeled as a hellish place, while Mars was portrayed as humanity's next frontier. These labels didn't deter the Soviets. Their main goal was to demonstrate superiority over the Americans, and they succeeded in doing so. Although the Venera missions are often overlooked in contemporary history, they were incredibly complex, advanced, and ambitious. If we were to pinpoint an event marking the dawn of the space age, the Venera missions would be at the forefront. The Soviet program began in the 1950s, experimenting with the design and technical details of the probes, and for the next 30 years, they launched interplanetary spacecraft as part of the Venera program. Operating alongside a tumultuous Cold War, the Soviets prioritized the improvement of their resources. Fortunately, the early years of the conflict provided them with a stronger workforce than the U.S., which proved beneficial in building on their capabilities. The USSR began to develop and launch larger rockets designed to withstand high altitudes and long durations. The Soviets were eager to test both manned and unmanned spacecraft. Simultaneously, the Soviet academic community was engaged in a series of calculations and evaluations to establish precise trajectories for the Venus missions. Behind the scenes, their Mars programs were also progressing. Nothing was more critical to the Soviet space agency than creating sophisticated instruments for these probes, leading to significant advancements in space exploration. In 1966, the Soviet Union launched Venera 3, making it the first artificial probe to enter the atmosphere of Venus and successfully connect with the planet's surface. This achievement heightened the competition between the two superpowers. Unlike the American missions, which were plagued by setbacks and failures, the Soviet program continued to make strides. Despite ongoing challenges, the USSR managed to send successful probes into Venus's atmosphere. The primary limitation of this approach was their restricted design capabilities. The Soviets quickly overcame these design issues and launched the most advanced rockets of the Venera program in the 1970s. Their enhanced capabilities enabled them to conduct the first dual launches of Venera 4 and Venera 5. According to many historians, this was the most thrilling decade in the history of space exploration. Indeed, the U.S. struggled to develop comparable launch plans. So, why did the Soviet Union choose to pursue dual launches into Venus? To understand this, it's essential to recognize that interplanetary travel requires advanced instruments to gather the highest quality data. The first probe, Venera 4, was launched to study the planet's surface. The launch went smoothly, and the spacecraft successfully entered Venus's atmosphere. Building on this success, the Soviet program proceeded with Venera 5, which was not just a repeat of the first launch but was specifically designed to collect detailed information about the planet. The Soviets aimed to overcome the extreme temperatures, atmospheric pressure, and radiation conditions on Venus. They didn't have to wait long for results. By the mid-1970s, the Soviet program was entering the most advanced phase of the Venera missions. Everything the USSR had accomplished thus far revolved around research and innovation, focusing on refining their designs and technologies. They also aimed to perfect the techniques and mechanics of interplanetary travel. 
However, during the second decade of Venera missions, the Soviet Union shifted towards conducting exploratory missions. The most significant and fascinating launch of this period was Venera 7, which, as the 11th Soviet probe, became the first spacecraft to send data from another planet.